In this video, we're going to look at electrolytes. We're going to look at definitions, examples, and how to classify them into strong, weak, and non-electrolytes. So when we start out, the definition that we'll use for an electrolyte, it's a substance that dissolves in water and it produces ions. And because it produces ions, the solution, it can conduct electricity. So a big question we need to address right away, this idea of ions. How do we recognize ions? So we're talking about ions. We're talking about these elements here or groups of elements that have a positive or a negative sign written after them in their superscript. So when you see that plus or minus, we're talking about ions. The positive ions, those are called cations. The negatives are anions. So where do these ions come from? If you have something like salt, NaCl, that dissolves in water, it'll split apart into ions, so it'll produce the sodium ion and the chloride ion. So ions come from compounds that dissolve, dissociate in water. So let's classify some electrolytes. So when we classify electrolytes, strong electrolytes, they break apart completely, solution conducts electricity, and we have lots of ions formed. For weak electrolytes, they dissociate slightly. So the solution doesn't really conduct electricity well, but it does conduct. And then non-electrolytes, they don't break apart. They don't form ions, so they don't conduct. So really, we're talking about the number of ions formed when we put the substance in water. So let's do it this way. I'll put a substance up, and then we'll use this table to determine whether it's a strong, weak, or non-electrolyte. So let's look at HCl. Well, first off, we see the H in front. That tells us it's going to be an acid. So we know it's going to be a strong electrolyte or a weak electrolyte. But to know if it's strong or weak, the best way is to memorize the common strong acids and common strong bases. So these are the common strong acids and bases. If it's not on this list, you pretty much can assume it'll be a weak acid or a weak base. So we had hydrochloric acid, and here it is, HCl, hydrochloric acid. That's a strong acid. It's a strong acid. That means it's a strong electrolyte. So HCl, we'll put it up here with the strong electrolytes, and that's because it's a strong acid. Let's try another. H3PO4. So again, we have this H in front, so it's going to be an acid. But is it a strong or weak acid? We look at our list of strong acids. It's not on the list of strong acids. That means H3PO4 is going to be a weak acid, and if it's a weak acid, it's a weak electrolyte. And because of that, the solution would only conduct electricity weakly. What about this one here, CH3OOH? Sometimes you'll see this written as HC2H3O2. That's because this H, it tells us it's an acid, but up here they put the H at the end. This whole thing is called a carboxylic acid. So You'll see it both ways. You just need to recognize this one. So we look for CH3COOH, acetic acid here, or the other version, and not on there. For that reason, this is going to be a weak electrolyte because it's a weak acid. What about FeOH3? When we see this OH group here and it's bonded to a metal, we know it's going to be a base. So if we look back at our list here, strong bases, it's not on the list. That means it's a weak base, and because of that, it's a weak electrolyte. How about KOH? Again, we have the OH bonded to a metal, so we have a hydroxide. This is potassium hydroxide. We look in our list of strong bases. Here is potassium hydroxide, so it's a strong base. That means it's a strong electrolyte. What about NH3? NH3 is a bit of a trick. This is one you just need to memorize. NH3 is considered a base. And if we look at our list of strong bases, it's not on the list. So for that reason, we consider NH3 to be a weak base, therefore a weak electrolyte. I recommend you memorize NH3 as a weak base. It'll save you a lot of trouble. So we've talked about acids and bases. Let's take a look at salts, ionic compounds. So we have NaNO3. Will it be a strong electrolyte or a weak electrolyte? That depends on how many ions it produces in solution. The way we tell is by memorizing the solubility rules. Some teachers will use a solubility table as well. But these are the general rules here. And if we look at our rules, salts of group 1 elements, like sodium, 
are soluble. So they'll dissolve in water and dissociate completely into ions, make a lot of ions. So we have sodium nitrate. Since it's soluble, it'll be a strong electrolyte. What about PBI2? We have a metal and a nonmetal, so it's an ionic compound. It's a salt. But will it be a strong or weak electrolyte? So in our rules, for compounds that have the iodide ion, this I minus iodine in them, they are soluble except silver compounds and lead compounds. And here we have a lead iodide, lead to iodide. Because of that, this won't be soluble in water. That makes it a weak electrolyte. Just a little bit will dissolve. But that does put ions in solution, so we're going to call it a weak electrolyte. What about KBr here? We have a metal and a nonmetal, so it's an ionic compound. It's a salt. But how many ions does it produce? So we look at our rules, and here the first rule, K+. Plus, we have the potassium ion here. Those compounds are soluble. So since it's soluble, it'll dissociate completely into ions. We'll have a lot of ions. That makes KBr a strong electrolyte. So the solubility rules here, they're another tool, just like memorizing the strong acids and strong bases, to figuring out whether something will be a strong or weak electrolyte. Let's talk a bit about non-electrolytes. So if we look at the periodic table here, divided into metals, metalloids, and non-metals, we can see the non-metals over here. For substances that aren't acids or bases, if we have only non-metals, it's considered to be a molecular compound. And in general, molecular compounds are non-electrolytes. Let's put it right up here. Is CH4 a strong, weak, or non-electrolyte? We find carbon right here and hydrogen. They're both the green, so they're non-metals. Since we have all non-metals, it's not an acid or a base. CH4, that's going to be a non-electrolyte. What about CCL4? Well, again, we have carbon here, and here's chlorine. They're both nonmetals. It's not an acid or a base. So CCL4, that's also going to be a non-electrolyte. So for CH3OH, is it a strong, weak, or non-electrolyte? We see the OH here, so we're kind of thinking it's going to be a base. But the OH is bonded to carbon and hydrogen, and these are both nonmetals. So we don't have a metal, so this isn't a hydroxide. When we have an OH bonded to a carbon, it's actually an alcohol, and it's considered a non-electrolyte here. So let's put that up with our non-electrolytes. So back to our table. So at this point, you should know your common strong acids and bases, be able to use the solubility rules, and figure out whether a substance is a strong electrolyte, weak electrolyte, or a non-electrolyte. So pause and classify each one of these compounds. So based on memory or this table here, H2SO4, that's strong. It's on our list. LiOH on our list as well. And then we should remember that this acetic acid is an acid, but it's not on our list. So that's going to be a weak electrolyte. And NH4 is a base, but it's not on our list. So that'll be weak. For calcium chloride, we have a metal and nonmetals. So this will be a salt, an ionic compound. And since it has chlorine in it, we know that it should be soluble. It'll dissolve in water, produce lots of ions. So this is going to be a strong electrolyte. There is one exception, though, with the chlorines. If we have chlorides and silver compounds, or lead compounds too, that'll be insoluble. So only a very small amount will dissolve. We have a metal and a nonmetal, so it should be ionic. It'll be a salt. But since not much dissolves, that'll be weak. Finally, we have this compound here that's made up of all nonmetals. Because of that, all nonmetals, and it's not an acid or a base, this will be a non-electrolyte. So to recap, we can figure out if something's an acid or a base, and whether it's strong or weak, we can classify it as a strong or weak electrolyte. Then for ionic compounds, for salts, we can use the solubility rules to see how much they'll dissociate. If they're soluble, they'll dissociate completely, lots of ions, strong electrolyte. If they're insoluble, only a very small amount, so it'll be a weak electrolyte. And finally, for our non-electrolytes, they're made up of non-metals, and they're not an acid or a base. So that's how you classify compounds as strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, and non-electrolytes. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.